figure out it gets like lower at yeah, the yeah. end. It's got that like semi. Yeah. I like pr I uh, printed down reverb. We come alive at night, like neon lights. We are the sound underground that burns so bright. Don't keep when I first met Hudson. I got a demo and uh, Hudson was sort of deep into the screamo metal genre uh, and the stuff was cool. It was very cool but it honestly didn't feel like a, a really personal fit. There was, there was a little bit of a disconnect between the Hudson, the guy I was getting to know, and his sound musically. I sent James probably a demo of maybe like 25, 30 songs. They're all over the place. Electronic you know, hard rock, acoustic, and uh, he kind of wrote back to me and gave me some positive feedback in the acoustic, you know, singer-songwriter vibe, more of the pop rock stuff, and he thought that that was a better fit. So we said, okay, well, what do we have now? We've got kind of your history in Screamo, Screaming in Metal Band, and now we've got you having lived in the singer-songwriter world for a while. Let's see if we can, you know, bridge the gap. And we thought the best way forward was to add a great producer and I think that that was one of the things that we talked about was that you can come up with the songs and you can have you know even if you're hundred percent comfortable with where you are as an artist the way to get to that next level is a great producer and a great producer being someone who's talented but also someone who gets what you're trying to do and someone that you get along with and that can work with and my first thought was um, there's a guy who we've been working with at the Hit Lab, uh, Riley Friesen, and I think that you guys would get along. And from there, maybe develop a friendship and a working relationship to where you guys can work on your sound. Hey, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> Want an interview like this? Yeah. It was great to work on the record because, like, as a producer, I work on all sorts of different music all the time. It's all over the field, but they're usually like with one within a project. And because of that, like me personally as an artist, as a songwriter, like I have that constant battle of writing songs that are all over the board, like with what I'm digging right now. So when Hudson came with all his stuff, it was like, this feels familiar. You know, like we can kind of both be in this place where we're wanting to combine all the stuff we've been working on. It was really fun on this record collaborating, though, definitely. Yeah. You know, especially because Riley is a songwriter at heart as well, so... But it was easy for us to come up with ideas mm -hmm. on the spot, you know, because we both play guitar, both play bass, both sing, mm -hmm. you know, both play keyboards, so yeah. we could just jump on it, so it was kind of a... Yeah. It's a good working environment, and there's only two of us, so there's not a lot. Right, yeah. There's <laughs> you know, not, like, ten personalities to work with, no you know. Cooks, if someone's no angry, cooks. you know, it can bring the, the whole uh, vibe of the studio down completely, so... Right. Mm -hmm. And both pretty upbeat, so it was good. Yeah. Just a ago. The Hit Lab is is a studio that's really based on creation and writing, and uh, we don't have a big drum room, so we decided to go to Echo Bar Studios with Eric Rikers and track drums. One of the songs, Silver and Gold, where we didn't want a big room, we wanted the drums to be isolated and, and sound really tight and small and kind of in like kind of unique compared to everything else because there's a lot of really polished big drum sounds and kind of wanted something that was a little more, more down to earth. Riley um, heard, I guess, like a specific drum sound, you know, that he wanted, like this tight kind of, uh, I guess, indie kind of, you know, not overly produced kind of drum part mm -hmm. that he had in mind. We stuffed the kit in a tiny room. We put a couple pieces of paper over the snare drum so we could get that tight sound over Silver and Gold. So we crammed him in a little ISO booth, took most of his drums away, gave him like three drums to hit, like something with a, like a tom beat would be kind of cool, like you started to do in the demo. Yeah, I know. And set up a bunch of mics and, and uh, kind of did something unique there too. So that was kind of fun, doing something different. Silver hopes and golden dreams Are we cracked at the seams? If I could touch you, if I could see I had half a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this guy's supposed to know what he's doing. He's like putting paper on the drum. All right, here we go. Paper. 
And Silver and Gold is this like understated muted thing where like every little ghost note on the snare is audible and the mics feel like they're like right in front of your ears. And it's this really intimate, warm sound. It's not, um, it's not the whole thing isn't wet and, and ethereal. There are elements of it like delayed guitars, but still, uh, you know, the, the heart of it is a very warm, like in a padded room kind of sound. Um, but yeah, we went through, I mean, I remember going through countless melodies mm -hmm. on that song to, yeah. to land the, the chorus. So how does, how does that process work when you go through um, lots of melodies and, and try different things? And how does that sort of relate to, you know, finding the potential in, in an artist and, and exactly what, what fits in a song? That one we took over a couple weeks, I think, of just of listening to the track when we're not at the studio. And Hudson definitely knows the melody that he wants to hear when he hears it. You know, we went through a bunch of melodies, and some of them, I think, would have been good melodies. Um, they would have... A, a certain artist might have loved it, but Hudson was looking for his one thing. And then when we found it, it was like, you know, that was it. Finding that right sound, I guess, is, has to do with the context of the song. Mm -hmm. You know, so we wouldn't have, like, some blaring, crazy Axl Rose melody, you know, over a really soft indie ballad. Right. You know, we kind of tone it down, maybe... Uh, more falsetto or, you know, concentrate on different vocal tones, which, uh, which Riley is also really good at identifying as well, which was a great part of working on this record, is not having the same vocal tone for every single song, you know. As Hudson would say, it's as real as the streets. It's as real as the streets you walk on. I said this record's pretty personal, um, and especially the track Back to Life, because I had a incident, a heart virus, that I almost died from right before making this record. So I thought I'd kind of write a record and kind of base that as a theme and with new eyes coming back and kind of ridding of a lot of bad, bad, bad stuff in my life. But after that, I kind of just uh, started writing a lot, because that's all I could do. I couldn't really play. I couldn't play any shows. I couldn't. I had to stop. I had a bunch of shows booked basically on so much medication I couldn't do anything past like 9, 10 p.m. So that's when I started writing for this record. I think I think the song Back to Life is mainly about that experience in the hospital um, just because just of all, like, all the stuff I worried about before just seems so minimal, you know, minimalistic now because, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just worried about a career now, music and just expressing the art no matter what, what happens, I guess, inevitably. So not to be fearful because I almost didn't have another chance, so surrounds me there's freedom within reach I know that I've come back to life no regrets no apologies I won't give up for the life of me it all seems so easy now on the fringe of reality Hudson is like, he's got this like drummer side of him that's like really technical and loves like the math of drums and like intricate beats and you can, you can tell he just like really loves thinking music that's like complicated and not just like easy to digest. But coming from this like scene of, of being in metal bands and drumming uh, with all these technical rock bands, he wanted to make something that was like a little bit easier to digest that people of every like of different genres would like to hear so it was kind of fun to like do a project where it wasn't about it really wasn't about trying to bring in metal and pop and all that stuff it was more like somebody who has all those influence just combines everything to come out with a record I feel it inside me my heartbeat my 